little shoe hospital. This is my granddad. And this is my dad. These were the workers back in those days. And then this is another old picture. This is my granddad. This is my dad. This is my older brother. Italy, Mexico, Venezuela, down South America, Mexico, Mexico, Mexico. So all these guys are the old timers. Little's originated <clears throat> by my grandfather, which was Lucian Little, in 1915. He was a shoe salesman, and he sold shoes out of a buggy. And Marfa, Texas is where he got started. From the shoe salesman, he opened up a shoe store on the Commerce, Commerce Street in, in North Flores. And uh, from the shoe business, they started shoe repair. And from shoe repair, uh, my dad learned through some of the repair people that we had how to make boots. And when he started making boots, then it revolved from a shoe store into a boot operation. This was my old champion. He, he was one of our fastest, highest quality workers you've ever seen. And he's the only one in our shop ever worked by piecework. Because he produced nothing but quality and he worked by himself, no family. Lived right here next door. He'd go to work at six o'clock in the morning and he'd quit when they shut, closed the shop at six o'clock. Work a 12 hour day. You can only do so much without going excessively and overworking your people or not doing the little detail work that you used to do. And that's where you keep your quality. When you start exceeding that, you're losing your quality and then you start thinking, well, let's make more boots because we can make more money. And you think, you think of the money more than you do the quality of the boot. And, uh, and that's why you don't see very many small custom houses because most of them eventually either got, get bought out or decide to go into a larger production to be able to survive. And that's when you lose the quality. And most of all your big boot people, if you think about it today, Nakona, Judson, Lou Casey, you name it, they were all custom boot makers originally. But as time progressed, they got bought out by big corporations and they just are doubling up and making making thousands of boots a day. And this is a little pride and joy of mine. This is the first boot that I've ever made. It's a two exotic skin combination. It's a salt water bottom with a full quill arches top. And it's seamed up the back style. It's a one, one piece top with a nice little crocodile trim. And it's seamed up the back with a piece of crocodile. This is a full quill Archer's boot top and bottom, and it's a cowboy style. What, what, is, what makes it cowboy style? Well, it's a dip. This, this boot here is, is one seam down the back, and it's, a, it's a, what we call a seam up the back. The cowboy is a four piece, so this is three pieces, this is four piece, and we just give it a cowboy, <laughs> and that's what we know is a four piece boot. This is a very, very unique boot. It's a, a nice saltwater crocodile, and it's a matching set. And it's a cowboy style four beast boots, and it's laced up the front and the back. It's laced up the, the scallop and it's laced up the wings. This little jewel here starts off at $10,000. Besides that, we also do what we call a very, very fancy boot. This is kangaroo and it's completely of ostrich, I mean a kangaroo, and it's got all the different type of birds that we was able to develop because the customer wanted this particular boot and he wanted to call it the bird boot. And it's got every damn bird that you can think of. And it took forever to do. But it's also, this is the, the, the seam up the back style. And we did that so that we'd have a big enough surface to be able to put everything in that the customer wanted on it. And even had the red seam up the back. So this is, a, this is one of our real flashy boots. But it, it's, it's a beautiful boot. To make a good quality boot, you've got to have the great material. And with the great material, you have to have 
great quality craftsmen that can be able to do a boot to make it look exactly except what you're trying to sell is a good dress western boot. Uh, you can find boots anywhere, but to make them look dressy and quality is, is the important thing. And that's where you've got to determine what a customer likes. If he doesn't like tightness, you'd better not make them tight because he just can't wear them. And then if you don't make them tight enough, a customer will say, well, God, I could have bought these in the shelf somewhere because they're just too damn loose. I like something that's snug. So and through the years, you learn which customer likes what. And once you've achieved what he likes, you stay right there with it, and, uh, and that provides him keep coming back. And, right. and it's, it's a very difficult trade, very difficult trade. Yeah. We use, like I said, two skins about this size. And this skin is the, seat, is the salt water, and it's a 39 centimeter skin. 39 centimeters is the measurement from here to here across the valley. And that's the way they size these things. So, when we buy a boot, we buy, I mean a skin, we buy two skins of the same size. And what we do is we cut a left one and a right one. So all of our boots that we sell custom to, to a customer uh, are duplicate sets. The left and the right will be just about the same. actually sewing the boot counter to the boot top. A 3115 model, Singer model sewing machine. And we've had this for years. My dad bought them years ago and we've been having them redone, put new parts and it's been a, this thing, I think this machine is older than I am. <laughs> Side seams. Side seams. The actual, the actual boot top, uh, so that he can close them together. And this is the seam that goes in between the, the boot. And he, he's holding home one, one side to hold it in place. It's what we're doing is cutting an inlay out of the top boot top. And it's what what we've got here is what we call a small guillotine. It's a needle that's been trimmed down like a little blade, and it's cut real tight. And instead of it stitching, it's cutting the leather. It's a lot better than hand work. It just smooths it out, and he, and he, just, he just follows the leather that he prints on top. After it's stitched on the small machine to line it up, this is a heavy machine to make sure that it stays together. And then after he gets through with that, he's going to hand trim it to smooth it out on the inside. This is, this is where after he does that and puts ears on, he turns it. And then you'll see a boot top.
Uh, there's there's your boot top. The, the putting the box toe on. I hate to put this up uh, because it's so sticky. The purpose of, of uh, the, uh, the pegging is to bind the outsole and insole together. And the reason they use pegs, because once it sets up, it goes into the leather and when the leather dries, it swells and holds it tight. If you put nails in it, eventually the nails get rusty and the hole gets bigger and then they fall out. But the wood peg never gives up, it just holds forever. What is the hammering into? It's got a metal plate on the bottom of the ledge. business is working with people and we've done it all our life we never have wholesales in our life and we do it all by personal contact we strictly work of word of mouth because that's the way we've existed for all these years you've never seen an ad of us in any magazine or anything trying to promote a boot sale all of them are strictly word of mouth and that's the best business you can have because when people come in here they know that they're looking for quality and that they're going to be provided quality. And um, I guess that's why we've succeeded for so many years. And I keep telling my workers that have been with me for all these years. I've got, I've got two workers that have been with me since for at least over 30 years there. And uh, one of them's got 25. There's three of them that have been with me for quite a few years. And they're very qualified, experienced people. And I keep telling them, I says, don't either one of you think of quitting until I retire. And they say, well, when are you going to retire? I says, well, y'all just keep working. <laughs> I've got two of them that are working now four days a week. And uh, they've been with me for so damn long. They're just, it seems like when I took over the business, they were here with me. And we've just continued working together and, and uh we know each other so well now that if we get mad at each other, tomorrow's another day. Forget about what we did yesterday, you know. But it's just, it's been, it's been great. It's been a blessing to me to have people that have been with me for this long.